progress. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Getting moving, getting my water and vitamins and coffee and all that. <laughs> all those things, absolutely. <laughs> morning, Joe. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm good, how are you? I am good. Can I ask a quick question before I get started? Sure. So I'm getting ready to uh, submit an offer and part of the agent agent comments was that uh, I need to provide a as is addendum. Yes. So is that just a normal addendum and then I just put the words as is in it? No, if you search for as is addendum, you'll find it. Because I tried searching last night and I couldn't find it. Yeah, if you just search for as is, it'll come up. Just, just type in as. Yeah, okay. and, uh, you'll find it. It's yeah, there. Yeah. So what, what you're going to do is you're going to, what the as is addendum like says is that you have a, um, oh, well, let's see. There we go. You have a, um, a set time for the inspection, right? And uh, you're going to set how long that is. Usually 10, 14 days. I'd talk to the inspector <laughs> and find out how quickly they can get out there. Okay. And then. Uh, basically, it says that your client, after the inspection, can terminate the agreement, get their earnest money back if there's any undisclosed item that comes up on the inspection report that they're concerned about. So, yeah. the as is is a good deal for the buyer. I don't, I've never understood why sellers request it, but that's, they might not have read it. I'm not sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. How's everybody this morning? Very, very good. Anybody got something good to share? Shelly's looking all professional there with her headphones on. Armand, how'd your appointments go? Uh, well, the uh, first one was because of the ice. Uh, we rescheduled for Monday. Oh, very good. And then the uh, uh, second one, the man stood me up, and so far he hasn't answered my phone calls. So, well, then the important question is: Did you have a good breakfast at Denny's? Yes, I did. Okay, see, there's a silver lining in everything, right? Right, right. I got All some right. bacon for a change. I don't eat as much bacon anymore because of the fat content. But it's a nice to have a treat every once in a while. Yeah, it is. All right, well, while we wait to see if anybody else shows up a few minutes late, I'm going to start with something different. We're going to start incorporating this in. Those of you guys that um, were at family reunion, either virtually or in person, or have taken a look, I'm going to show you right now real quick. If you weren't at family reunion and you haven't seen this, I want you to go into your mykw.kw.com and you're going to get lots of good stuff here. You're going to get my favorite, the keynote speaker. Um, you're going to get a little bit of what he shared with us, and we're going to start incorporating this into what we do. You also get a little bit of the stories from Inspirational Morning and some lessons from the breakout. So, And then the vision, I, I emailed that out to you guys. So make sure you pop in there and, and take a look at those things. But here's where I want to start today. I want you guys all to take a piece of paper out, and I want you to write down five things this week that you're most grateful for. So everybody just take a minute and write down five things that you're most grateful for from this week. They can be big things. They can be little things. Real estate related or no? Nope. It can be. Yes, no. It is up to you. Just five things that you're grateful for. One of mine this morning is I had these apples. I came back from family reunion. I had these apples that were really good before I went to family reunion and they were kind of soft when I got back, you know, a little mealy and you know, that's not, that's, I don't know if you guys, I don't like mealy soft apples, right? So I put them in the oven last night and this morning I was thinking how grateful I was that I thought to do that because I had them with my oatmeal this morning and they were amazing. So it could be something just like that or it could be something really big. Does anybody have anything that they're grateful for this week that they want to share? Sure. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm really glad that my dad was found safe. He went missing for four days, you guys. So it was a very tough week for me. And I'm really happy he was found alive. <laughs> now, you said, uh, is he in a, an, in a community? 
He's not. So he's he back home. Well, right now he's in a mental health unit. So okay. that's where he needs to be right now. Yeah. I can't imagine how difficult that was. And we're all very thankful. Very, th yes. very thankful. So we can see that's something we can all be grateful for. Anybody else something you want to want to share you're grateful for this week? Well, I found a house for my daughter, so that's a good thing. Yay! Yeah. But then what's going to happen when you have to separate the puppies? That's a good question. <laughs> there, could, there could be separation anxiety. We'll see. They're going to have to go visit. Oh, yeah. She's okay. going to, she's already had two quotes for a fence to fence in the entire acre, so they're going to have room to run. Oh, how exciting. See, that's two things to be thankful for. Yep. Oh, that's exciting. Anybody else? Something to be grateful for? Yeah. Um, I... Go ahead. Both of you, just to whichever one wants to go first. Armand first, then Annie. All right. Uh, I slept last night three and a half hours. Uh, the first time and the second time I slept for three hours. So. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. When you haven't been sleeping, that's a big deal, yes? Yeah, it is. I love it. Miss Annie? I'm sorry, my washer is making a bunch of noise, but um, my son is home on break, so that Yay! is amazing. I'm just really excited. And yeah, then there's also family reunion. I got to go to that, and that was really a blessing. So, um, uh, you know, my health, and um, I've been able to help someone this week. So that was cool. Very good. So if you, there's a book, it's called The Happiness, Happiness Advantage. He actually has several books. I started The Happiness, Happiness Advantage first. I'm about halfway through it. Sean Acor is his name and it's, it's awesome. So we, we're gonna just infuse. The, the premise here is that if we get in a happy, positive state of mind, we will be more successful. He has, uh, and it's so true, right? You think about when this happens, I'll be happy. When this happens, I'll be happy. And, and it's backwards. And in the book, he talks about um, how at one point in time, everybody thought that the sun circled the earth, right? And when we realized the sun didn't circle the earth, that it was the other way around, it opened up the possibilities of so many different things. And he makes the analogy that it's the same thing between happiness and success. We think that um, success is required for happiness when in fact it's happiness that's required for success. So I, I'm loving it. And we're gonna, the next round of the 12 weeks is gonna have a healthy dose of this incorporated into it. And we're gonna start, um, we're gonna start incorporating it in throughout everything that we do because I want you guys all to be successful, which means we have to be happy and positive, not fake positive, not put it on fake positive. We can find ways uh, just like my apples, right? We can find ways to be grateful with, you know, I had, I had bad apples. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to add, if you don't mind something else that he said, he said uh, that every morning send a two minute text or phone call or, you know, email or whatever, just take two minutes to do it, to tell someone you appreciate something about them, something they did for you, you know, something, whatever, just tell someone you appreciate them. And that is amazing because it just spreads joy and you'd be surprised how much you get back. <laughs> Absolutely. So, cool. And, and just a little sneak peek. That's probably what's going to be part of the 12 weeks next time. Just saying. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Jason, you had, did you have your hand up? Yes, I did. I just, um, I didn't get called on, but that's okay. I just wanted to do uh, two things I'm thankful right now at this point in time with what's going on with Russia and then I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for our freedom and um, I'm thankful for God. Absolutely. And, and the guys remember, I'm not good at the hand thing. So if you want to talk to shout, even if you're, you know, like Annie and Armand will figure it out, but I apologize. The screen does not let me see everything that I would like to see. So no, you're fine. All right. Hey, Carla, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay because these are new headphones and I don't really know how they're working. Um, something I'm grateful for this week is I had clients from two years ago uh, reconnect with me. You know, I've stayed connected with them, but reconnect with me. They want to sell their house that I sold them two years ago and buy some land. And so that's fantastic, right? But they said to me that I was so nice and that my service was so good 
um, that that's why they wanted to stay with me. Y'all, that was the fourth house I sold. Um, it was a relocation. The people, the sellers were relocation. Uh, and it was a giant headache and pain in the butt. And I had zero idea what I was doing. And they said I was so nice to them and they wanted to work with me again. It made me feel so good last night. It was fantastic. Awesome. Now tell me, Shelly, what have you done in between that transaction and now to stay in contact with them? Uh, I have sent them Mother's Day and Father's Day cards, Christmas cards. I pop in every now and then with a text. Uh, they call me occasionally and ask me questions about random things. So just, um, I don't know. So you stayed in contact. Yeah, just mostly cards and little texts and here and there and things like that. Okay, that's yeah. great. What a great segue. I felt really crazy. nice last night about it. Isn't it nice when somebody says, I, you know, I have to say, Annie, Annie said something to me at family reunion that filled my cup up so much. And she may not have realized how meaningful it was to me. But sometimes when we say things to people, we, we don't realize, you know, what it's the little things. What's this phrase? It's something about sometimes it's not about what we say, what we say to people. It's about how we make them feel. And they made you feel important, Shelly. Yes. Yeah. I love it. All right. Good morning, Jessica Tharp. Oh, listening only. Happy Saturday. I hope you came up with some things to be thankful for. All right. Let's jump in because this is a great one. Um, now, I sent you a book last night and you're going to know that I probably did a no-no, but I did it anyhow because this had some dated material in it because this class was written um, in 2014, 2015. And so I made some updates to the book that I sent you. Um, I know it's a copyrighted and I probably wasn't supposed to do that, but it was it was easier than trying to skip through it today. So I hope you'll forgive my, my mistake. I did it for all the right reasons. And I've updated the slides a little bit too. So, but this is working with METs. And if you've read the MREA, um, you know where that language comes from, right? The, the METs. Um, this could be, you know, your, you could replace this with your sphere, your database. We can replace those words with that um, as well. So, okay, but we're going to start where we always start. Oh, this is what we're going to do today. First, we'll start there. So we are going to talk about what are METs. We're going to talk about networking, which is such a fun word that I had honestly never heard until I started preparing for this class. And I actually love the word. We're going to talk about working with METs and we're going to talk about referrals. Does anybody here want referral business? Do you want your people to send you business so you don't have to go find it? Um, and then we're going to put it all together like we always do. All right. So, yeah, we don't worry about that. Um, we're going to start where we always start. We've been together. This is, I think, this is class five. So this means we've been together seven weeks because there was an introduction class. So seven weeks. So I want you to think about the last two weeks since we weren't here last Saturday. I want you to think about the last two weeks. And I want you to write down what your lead generation activities were in the last two weeks. And then I want you to think back on the last seven weeks since we started this class on Saturdays. How has your lead generation activities changed over the last seven weeks? Have you made more calls, fewer calls, changed who you were calling, changed the time on your calendar that you called? So think through that for just a minute. So your lead generation activities in the last two weeks, any ahas you have when you take a look at what you write down, and then what has changed for you over the last seven weeks as relates to your lead generation. And if for some reason this is your first class, then obviously you can still think about, you know, your lead generation the last two weeks, and maybe you won't be able to reflect on the last seven. When somebody has a thought on that, jump in and share. What was it, Carla? You had the uh, last two weeks. What what's changed in our your lead generation? Write down all of your lead generation for the last two weeks. And then, you know, we know what we need to do. So compare what you wrote down to what we need to do and see if you have any ahas about that. 
And then take a look at your lead generation over the last seven weeks since we started this lead generation series. Has there been any changes in the way you think about lead generation in your activities? And maybe you've changed when you do your lead generation, how much you're doing. What does that look like for you? And then just check in and see if you have. So this is all about being real with ourselves, right? We're self-employed. We are our own boss. This is your time to evaluate. Have you been doing your job? Have you been doing what you need to do to reach the goal that you've set for yourself? Hey, Carla, this yes. is my first time on. Um, Welcome. Yeah, thank you. So this week I had an aha moment. You know, you always, when you do this, well, for me, I thought my, you know, you think about your sphere and how you think about certain people put it like that, certain people, certain groups. And I got to thinking, I'm like, I have, my sphere is huge. So I have like a ton of groups I'm a part of. Just changing my mindset was the biggest thing for me this week was like, you know more people than you think you know. And figuring out a good way to like reach out. I have emails, I have phone numbers and addresses. So I'm just trying to wrap my mind around changing my mindset this, this week. <laughs> I love that. I love that very much. And it's true, right? You know, a lot more people than you think, you know, and we go through the exercise of looking at your Facebook. How many Facebook friends do you have? Look at your phone. How many, um, how many contacts do you have in your phone? right? All of those people should be in your database. If you do not have their contact information, then that becomes your lead generation. Remember our goal in lead generation is four things. We, we've talked about this pretty much every week so far. Does anybody remember the four things that make a successful lead generation um, contact? Marcus, you're laughing at me. Does that mean because you can't remember? Well, what do we yeah, call exactly. what do we want? <laughs> Is when we call, what do we want? What'd you say? Is it a maker? Appointment? Is it, a, is appointment. it a decision maker one? No, it's an appointment. If, we're, oh, yeah. if we have a successful call, if we get an appointment or if we get building a relationship, we're building a relationship, referral, a referral. What's the fourth one? We get information to add to our database, right? So we get, if we're missing an email, we updated email, an address, a birthday, information for our database. So when we're lead generating, that's what, th those are the four things that make for a successful call. Now the appointment, this is what we all want, right? Because we all want immediate business. We want every person we call to want to buy or sell a house. Is that correct? Is that true? Is that going to happen? Is that reality? Probably not ever. No, sorry. <laughs> but if we focus on the other three, we can leave our lead generation session knowing that we were successful, even if it was, didn't result in an appointment, right? Because an appointment, a referral, a relationship, in, in increasing our relationship and expanding our relationship. And I would, I would argue with you that anytime you talk to someone, number three is probably likely, right? Unless they hang up on you. And then you probably didn't expand your relationship or grow your relationship. And, then, and that's going to happen. Unfortunately, sometimes that's going to happen, but it, it's no big deal. So those are your four things. So <clears throat> Tio, I love that. Every one of those people you know, right? Every one of those people that you're thinking of, you can call them and accomplish all four, three, two, one of those things with those people. Pam and, Pam and I were talking this week. Pam said to me that she wished more people answered the phone. She's finally got, she's, she's ready. She's making the calls and they're not answering. And it's disappointing. Does anybody ever have that, that time frame that where it looks like that with your lead generation, you got yourself all prepared. You're making the calls and then they're not answering. How do we get people to, how do we get people to call us back? Yes, Annie. Send a text with a question. Yeah, send a text with a question, exactly. Give them a reason to call you back. Don't tell them what you want, you know? It could be, I have a quick favor to ask. Could you give me a call back? 
um, Pam and I were talking about, she's calling her neighborhood. I'm calling to make sure you know what's going on in the neighborhood. Can you give me a call back? You're leaving a question in their brain, right? They want to know what favor do you need? They want to know what, um, so that should be your voicemail message. And that should also be a follow-up text, right? You could follow up. I just left you a voicemail. I don't listen to my voicemail. I don't know about you guys. So I would appreciate it if somebody, after they left me a voicemail, sent me a text message and told me what they said in my voicemail, because that way I don't have to find the time to listen to it. You don't know what they're, you don't know how they receive, right? So send it to them every way possible. Leave a voicemail text. All right. Anybody else have any ahas about their lead generation activities? Does anybody feel like they're getting better at it over the last seven weeks? I do. I think I'm getting better. It's just, um, I had to just learn how to deal. I'm going to be really, really honest. I just had to learn how to deal with the rejection of it all. Okay, the feeling of the rejection, the feeling of being ignored. Uh, you know, I just had to learn how to deal with that and pick myself back up and then get back in the game. That's, All right. that's what tell, tell me about rejection. What would what would happen, Marcus, that would make you feel rejected or perceive re rejection? Um. Well. You know, okay, let's just specifically, okay, I called someone, um, talked to them, had a great conversation. Um, we didn't get the appointment, but we got a lot of information. We got some information, right? And I didn't get the email. Um, it was just one of those things where, hey, you know, as soon as I get off the phone, I'll email you. Uh, I'll send, I'll text you all the information. Uh, nothing, no response back. I text them back, hey, you know, just checking back in, follow up. Um, I didn't get the information if you sent it and still no response. And these are people who, you know, if I see them out, we're just going to have a great time. We haven't seen each other in a while. We have things to catch up on. And it's like they kind of dodge you, you know? And so you just got to, I had to get over that feeling. I swear that feeling, I just had to identify what it was and then, you know, so if we, think, if we go back to the analogy that I have about you walk in a department store and somebody walks or a furniture store, let's say you walk into a furniture store or an electronics store and they walk up to you and they say, can I help you? What, what, what's our response normally? Looking. Just, just looking. looking. Now, what happens if they walk up to us 15 minutes later and ask, can they help us? I said, I was just looking. I'm just looking, right? So Marcus, what could you change about your messaging after your first conversation that would make them not feel that way? You know, I don't know. And that's the same approach I took. Now, I didn't want to be bothersome. I, I wanted to be the good uh, host and good, you know, agent and didn't, you know, not, not, a, not a knock on the door or anything like that. Just a soft reminder. Hey, um, if I didn't get them, I don't see the information. Maybe you sent it. Yeah. Hey, you know, so that's forget. fine. And they didn't respond because they haven't sent the message. How do you think they feel if you send that and they're not quite ready and they feel like that maybe could they maybe feel like they're letting you down? Exactly. All of that. I thought of that too. I thought of, you know, he's like, oh man, I didn't send it. I didn't want, you know, he's dealing with his own issues. Right. Yeah. But so, so how about a message, Marcus, that's just, you know what, um, I know this is a really big arm on, I'll get you there. I know yeah. that I don't want you to, your arm to get tired up there. So I'm coming, uh, but, 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 but Marcus, maybe it is something that is as simple as, um, Hey, you know what? Now might not be the right time or something else came up. I just want you to know that I'm going to be here for you whenever you're ready. Right. And I'm just going to check in with you because I want to make sure you remember that, I, that you know I'm here for you. Right. I'm just going to check in with you. And then my check ins is going to be, hey, dude, how things going? Right. And and then I can stay in top of top of mind with them without pushing them, because this it, is buying a house a big deal. Yes. Yes, and, I mean, it, and it was it wasn't that he was buying it. He actually was like, I have so many people, my daughters are looking. I'm glad you called. All right. So here's the thing. He thinks his daughter's looking. He goes to his daughter. He says to his daughter, uh, my friend has got his real estate license. He's ready to help you buy a house. She's like, Dad, I'm not ready yet. I'm just looking, right? Like it's you just remember, I'm just looking. 
I think 99% of rejection is I'm just looking. They told us at family reunion that it's, it, it, it's like 18 months from the time somebody starts thinking about buying a house until they actually buy a house. 18 months is the average. Carla, can I say something? You can. I'm going to check in with Armand first because he right had ahead. his arm up and I yeah, think he was getting fired. Well, uh, also, Marcus, one of the things that you can do after a while is to say, you're still still looking? Well, why don't you look at this and send him like three listings in different price categories that you think would fit for him? And then he's got something to either choose from or reject to you. Then you can get conversation going about it. Yeah, I agree. Thanks, Aaron. I agree. So, but uh, also sending them something of value at that particular point. Uh, for instance, there's a uh, smart smart plan on uh, in the library uh, that. Uh, talks about it, it. It's like a. I want to say it's like a six or seven uh, segment plan, and it talks about pre-qualifying. You know, that's another thing that you can uh, send because a lot of times what they're trying to do is also trying to figure out pricing. And pricing and you gotta figure out what it is. Absolutely. Figure out what it is that their motivation is. Here you're looking at referrals. So you know that might be a little bit different if he was referring you out to other people. But absolutely, Armand, you're right. We got to figure out what it is that they want and add value. Jason, what were you going to share? So Marcus, did you say this was a, like a, a buddy of yours that Jane spoke with for a while? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I'm going to go a totally different direction. I'm going to say maybe just reach back out and say, hey, it was a pleasure speaking with you, buddy. Hey, you want to get together for some lunch or some have a drink or something? Just kind of start to rebuild that relationship maybe and just forget about telling him on anything. And then once he regains that knowledge that you're not just popping in to sell, you're popping in to be a buddy again, you should start getting traction to get everything at that point. That's my Jason. I, it's a I relationship was, business. There, there's was, a shirt. One of the shirts at one of the shirts at Family Reunion says that real estate is a contact sport. I love that, right? It's not a contact sport like football, but it's it's just a relationship. We're making relationships. That's awesome. All right, Marcus. Well, I'm glad you worked through that. And always when you feel rejected, right? Ask yourself, is this really rejection? How would you define rejection in your life? Right? Rejection is your life in my life would be my children decided they didn't want a relationship with me anymore. Or my spouse decided they didn't want a relationship with me anymore. Saying they didn't want to buy a house, you know, we just have to check in with ourselves. Just check in, check in. I always, right. I always put it back on myself. Like if someone called me today and tried to sit, want me to buy a house, I'm not interested in selling my house. But you're so, not rejecting them personally. Right, exactly. So sometimes I try to turn it around and put it on me, you know, and say, how would I feel if someone called me and said that? Yeah. And, and Marcus, everything you're telling me from your conversation with this person, when I go and look at those four pieces of that, what four things that make for a successful call, that was a successful call. I think so too, in a way, right? I, it, because it built me, it really built on who I am, right? So, I mean, it, it allowed some things to roll through as they should and I had a chance to process it. And it just made me a little bit stronger, um, you know, a little I bit. I love it. I love it. All right. Anybody, anybody here feel like you have gotten to the point where you're doing exactly the amount of lead generation you need to be doing in order to get you to your goals. We've done the math to Here's the math. Just so you know, since you're, you're joining us for the first time, this class is 36, 12, three. So this is going to give you a good idea of what it is. 36 transactions with three hours a day of lead generation for 12 months. Okay, that's what 36123 stands for. So you think about what's your transaction goal and you know 36, 36 requires three hours a day. So 24 requires two hours a day. Figure that out for yourself. Are you getting enough lead generation time on your calendar? Anybody here have figured, got your calendar straightened out and you have enough lead generation time blocked on your calendar? Nobody? 
we got to start there. Does everybody know how many hours of lead generation you need? Mine is time blocked on my calendar. I just haven't honored it all the time. Okay. All right. Yay. That is a win, uh -huh. right? That is a win, Dan, because we've got it on our calendar, right? So if we don't have it on our calendar, figure out how much, if it's not on your calendar, what does that mean? It doesn't happen. It doesn't exist, right? It's not going to happen. If you don't have it on your calendar, get it on your calendar. That should be your big takeaway today. I have got to make sure my lead generation is on my calendar. Now, Dan, after we have our lead generation on our calendar, we have to figure out what do we need to do to make sure we honor it? Remove distractions. Dan, is it distractions that gets in the way? Only my own personal head. <laughs> your own personal head. How can we, how can we get, how can we reconnect with that? What do our lead generation activities directly relate to? Uh, it relates to income. I mean, our income and our goals, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're feeling not motivated, if you connect yourself back to your goal, I love that you've changed your back, your back screen. Cause I think that's a goal, right? That's a it's goal a back goal. there. Yeah. But what do you need to do to connect with your goal so that you make sure you honor it? So step one, get it on your calendar. Step two, honor your calendar, right? You do those things and you do it consistently week over week, over week, over week. Then mm -hmm. whatever your goal is, you're going to achieve it this year. Yeah. If you don't do those two things and you achieve your goal, it was by accident. Right. I would agree. All right. All right. So we're clear on our lead generation, what we need to do. So everybody set a goal for yourself right now and just write it down. What is your goal for your lead generation between now and next Saturday? Is it to get it on your calendar? Is it to do a better job of honoring your calendar? What specific goal are you going to set for yourself between now and next Saturday? And then I want, I want you to write that down and I want you to bring it with you next Saturday. I actually want you to write that down and I want you to put it somewhere where you see it all week long. And then next Saturday, I'm going to ask you how you did in relationship to that small goal, one goal for the week on lead generation. Does everybody have your one goal for the week? Okay. All right. I'm still sharing my screen, aren't I? All right, here you go. This is your takeaway today. Mets, use them or lose them. Should say, you know, you get, you're going to have, you, you read it. This is something, use them or lose them. If you're not communicating with your database, you're going to lose them because they also told us, that, told us this at Family Reunion, the way the world is right now with, I, I'm convinced that the six degrees of separation that they did with Kevin Bacon is no longer six degrees. Does everybody feel that too? You, you know, we're, we're much because of social media and the internet and all of those things were much closer. So everyone, there's a good chance that everyone in your database is also in somebody else's database. Would you agree with me that that's likely? What you gonna say, Annie? I was going to say two or three. I always say everybody knows five realtors. So yeah. now you need to know why, you, you know, now I can tell you why you should use me. So yes, exactly. But if, but, but if they are need to have a real estate need, who are they going to call? The one they've talked to most recently. The one that they hear from, right? The one that they remember, remember, people may remember you, but they may not remember that you're in real estate. Pay, people may remember you and would use you if they had a real estate need, but they don't think to refer you. It's our job to teach them and to remind them. So that's what this means. Use them or lose them because if you don't do it, somebody else is going to. And you really don't want, I, I, firsthand knowledge, I'm gonna tell you, you do not want your friend to use another realtor because it hurts a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, I was gonna say there's a difference between knowing of five realtors and actually knowing you know what i mean so um just because i mean i know a million even before i was in the industry but to be honest with you i probably wouldn't reach out to any of them i probably somebody i didn't even have never even spoke with because they never showed any interest in me either now that i'm a realtor i, I noticed that the relationship right i mean 
write that word out somewhere and hang it up. Like ask yourself at the end of the day, how many relationships did I fortify or make today? That's the measure of success in this business is relationships. Okay. That's, that's, you know, the lead measure and the lag measure, your lead measure is your relationships. The number of relationships you have and the strength of those relationships are going to give you your lag measure, which is your transactions, right? There's a direct correlation between the two. All right. All right. I, I think relationship needs to have a definition, you know, just a, a micro definition, you know? What does it mean to you, Marcus? Well, that's exactly, I think that's what I'm getting to, like, what is relationship? It doesn't mean relationship as in family relationship. It just means what contact. It just means. To me, it's a connection, right? To me, it's a connection. I feel like I have a relationship with all of you, but I would also say that I have a different relationship with each of you, right? But every time I talk to you, my goal is to strengthen or enhance that relationship, either by giving value, being supportive, um filling your cup up whatever that might look like i think it's all, i think you're right marcus it's a it's a nuance right there's a there's a nuance to it i don't know that there's an exact i'm sure we could google it and we could find all kinds of definitions for relationship but i think it's the strength of the connection because like uh jason just said right if you know five realtors and you think i wouldn't use any of them i would argue that those aren't very strong relationships they either don't know what, what would make a relationship. One, they know what you do, right? They know how passionate you are about what you do. What else would make a relationship? Uh, the right. quality of your work and integrity. Yes, they trust you, right? No, like trust, right? That's, hmm. that's the three pillars of, of this. Know you, like you, trust you. I'm not one. I'm not one usually for uh, being able to read through the lines. Um, but with Carla, I noticed on the one one to ones uh, that she's willing to give us more information. She doesn't judge us. She doesn't uh, 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 knock us down because we didn't do whatever fifteen hours worth of lead generation a week at least. Uh, she doesn't judge us on that. But what she does try to do is take the strengths uh, and point out uh, some of the weaknesses, but she points them out in a positive manner. So that makes me want to work with her a lot more and respect her a lot more. Well, thank you. Ah, that see now that's a relationship build right there. Thank you, Armand. I appreciate that. But how can you turn that into how you work with your clients, right? If your clients have, remember, it's not what we say; it's how we make them feel. If you make your clients feel that they're important, that they're heard, that they're valued, that whatever their needs are, their timeline is, whatever their goals are, are what's important to you, because really, what we want is we want them to close now, right? Is that what we want? We want them to close now. They call that commission breath. Has anybody ever heard of that saying? <laughs> and I promise you, you are going to end up in a transaction with a co-agent on the other side. And you're going to think, oh my gosh, that is some con commission breath. I'm telling you what, when that happens, you adopt their client after closing because you will now become that, that you will become the person for that. You, you will develop the relationship that didn't exist with their first realtor. Okay, so that's just a good a good key. Um, All right, who are Mets? See, they would be a Met, right? We met them. All right, so Mets. Can Met I say everybody? something real quick, Carla? Yeah. Just real quick. So my, the way I look at the relationship, Marcus, is um, you have a relationship with actually your friends and your family. So if you're calling someone you never spoke with, obviously right out of the gate, you're not going to have that connection. But once they tell you something that's off the real estate realm like something personal you're going on vacation here or there you can create a conversation now you're starting to build that relationship so anything that's personal to them i feel if somebody opens up enough to tell you anything personal now you have that that building room right there for that's my takes 
I love that. That's kind of like, you know, how, you know, when you have implied agency, right? You know, you have implied agency when you talk about money, (laughs) kind of the same thing. All right. So your Mets, these are people you met today. They're people you've known all your life, your family, your friends, right? These are people you come into contact with every day. Anybody go to the doctor last week? How many Mets did you add to your database from the doctor's office? Every time you leave your house, you have the opera and you come into contact with someone else, you have the opportunity to feed your database, to grow your database and to create, because you've met them, right? Would you agree if you talk to someone, you've met them? Met is, met is not really a relationship word, Marcus. Met is just met. I met you. I met you. I, I, I have the opportunity to get to know you. That is a met. So we're going to collect their contact information to feed your database. And you have to figure out how are you going to collect contact information. Um, So obviously the people that are in our phone, our Facebook, our family, our friends on our wedding list, bridal shower list, birthday list, all of those things, we know how to collect that data, right? They're on our Facebook and we don't have their phone number, their email. How do we get their phone phone number and email? We ask. Yeah, direct message them on Facebook, right? If you have a phone number, not an email, then you're going to call them and you're going to say, hey, I'm updating my database and I wanted to make sure I have all your information right. Is this your email or what is your email? People will tell you. If you're out and about, figure out what that looks like. Do you want to do a virtual or is that what it's called? Um, Digital, a digital business card, right? If you have a digital business card, you can say, you know what, I'm... I'm green. I don't, I don't like to waste paper. So I do this green, you know, the green way. And uh, if you give me your cell phone number, I'll just text you my business card. Beautiful, right? QR code. You have a QR code on your phone. They scan it. They get your business card. You know, my, my old school way, I have blank business cards, right? Blank business cards. When they ask for my business cards, I say, oh, darn, I'm out of business cards. But here, I've got a blank one. Give me your information and I'll get you my card. Figure out for yourself, you need a system around how are you gonna get people's information? If your system is napkins in your car, what's the likelihood they're gonna end up in your database? Probably not. Those of you that are at Keller Williams, if you have your phone, you have command mobile, you could easily just enter their contact information right there and then in your mobile phone and add it. But figure out for yourself, what is your system to collect data? So if you're making points of things to put in action items, now we're on number two. Number one is figure out your lead generation on your calendar. Number two is figure out how are you going to start collecting information for your database? All right. So in your booklet, go back to the booklet that I sent you last night. You can see this picture a little better because this is really small. I might stop share and reshare. I'm gonna stop share and share in the book. Um, Because I think it's easier to read here. Is that easier to read? I can even make that bigger, I think. Yeah, when I put these glasses on. All right, I made a little bigger. Marcus, I'm with you. My arms aren't long enough for my eyes anymore. All right, so we got some different groups. And we talk about our database, when we get a whole bunch, let's say we have 2000 people in our database, it's going to be important that we have them segmented a little bit, right? We have to figure out, we're going to communicate with different groups of people differently, right? The message is going to be different for different groups of people. And the millionaire real estate agent, they break, Gary breaks this down for us into four groups. Um, so we have our network group. These are individuals who know you because you have met them either in person or by phone, and they might do business with you. Okay, they might do business with you. Our allied resources are a subset of those people uh, who are in real estate related fields. These are our vendors. Those of you that are in the 12 weeks to success with me, these are the vendors that we're putting together. These are the people that we wanna be connectors with. We're gonna use these people as a value add to our, the rest of our database, but we wanna make sure we've developed a two-way referral relationship with them. So these are people who will or will do business with you but what we also want for them is to become a referral source for us. The advocates are people who have done business with you in the past, will continue to do so, and they are actively giving you referrals, okay? So these are 
These are your advocates, your fans, right? These are the people that think of you. They think when they think of you, they think of you as in relationship to real estate. And they think of you not only for themselves, but for other people. And then your core advocates. These are people who have or will do business with you, but they have their, their big, their VIPs, right? There's something about them. They are like Shelly. They are a natural connector, right? There's somebody who connects people with people all the time. They might be in an HR position, right? Human resources position for a company that, um, you know, relocates people all the time. Could be your hairdresser ladies, right? Your hairdresser could be a core advocate because they have lots of opportunity. So you need to go through your database and you need to think who has the potential of being, um, to, of giving me a steady stream of clients, right? A steady, steady stream of clients. And it may be one of your allied resources. It may be that you have a contractor that you've made a relationship with that works with lots of investors and they have the opportunity to send lots of investors your way. So you just have, but you have to identify who they are. Now, now that we know who these four groups are, you may not like the way these work. You may not like the titles of these and you can call them anything that you want. What's important here is that you segment your database in these four categories or these four buckets. Would you agree that your messaging to your network group would be different than your messaging to your core advocates? Right now, our goal is to do what? What would we like our networking group to become? When we like to move them down the path, right? And how do we do that, Marcus? What's the magic word? Ask them, uh -huh. talk to them. And it's relationships, right? Relationships. We, we, we take our networking group and we really build a strong relationship and they become an advocate, right? Because we've, we've gotten to that no like trust and now they become our fans. And then our, our core advocates are our raving fans. That's the way I like to think of it, right? It's our fans and our raving fans. So, okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Has anybody here started segmenting their database into groups? Could be A, B, C, D, could be whatever you want, gold, silver, bronze, and platinum. I don't know, whatever you want to call them, you know, you can figure out the words that work for you. Maybe it's color coded. Maybe you, you know, have green for core advocates because it's money, whatever that looks like for you. All right, so we have a little, we have a little exercise here. So growing your Mets, increasing the number of people in your database. Like I mentioned, we want to do this all day, every day. It's an all day, every day activity. So here's some different things that you can do to get involved. Um, join organizations in your community, volunteer your time, right? Your chamber of commerce, things like that. Attend networking events in real estate or through your chamber of commerce. Um, uh, poor Dan, the Kiwana is maybe not a good place to go, but <laughs> Dan's been trying to get to the Kiwanis for a really long time. And then they just, they must not need members. I don't know, but other ideas, Rotary, Lions Club, Toastmasters, um, your church, um, someplace where you could have a speaking engagement, where you could talk to people about the current status of the real estate market. Um, that's going to get you known by many people. And then you have the opportunity to, to get their information so that you can feed your database. Um, you have to be approachable. Logo, wear your logo, take something, your name tag, something, you know, have it on you. They will walk up to you in the grocery store. I, everybody here has heard the grocery store story, right? Stand in the longest line, talk to as many pe people. Want, people want to talk to you. I promise you, if you smile, Go back to shop. You smile at people. They will talk to you. And now we don't have to wear our masks inside, maybe. And so now we can really smile. We don't just have to smize them. We can smile them, right? And they will talk to you. People right now are hungry for connection because of where we've been. So you can get conversations easy. Um, and then in the, over the coming weeks, we're going to talk about some other ways to grow your database. But, you know, for sale by owners, expired, open houses, um, you're farming your neighborhoods, whatever that looks like. Other ways to do that. So we got to get out there. All right. So yellow pages. Here's an exercise for you to do. Not right now, but we do it. Go out onto Google, yellow pages, whatever that looks like, and see 
who could I get? Like right now in the 12 week program, everybody in that program is building out a vendor book that they can give to their, um, their sphere that, you know, they can become the connector. So think about all the kind of contractors that you would like to have in your allied resources, plumbers, electricians, HVAC people, and then create those relationships. It's not about just writing down their name and phone number though. What do you have to do? Build a relationship two way, call you them. You gotta call them, right? If you write that, if you take their information out of the yellow pages and you write it down, their name and their phone number, and you add it to your database, did you create a relationship? No. So you got to go that extra step further. And there's scripts for that. Those of you that are in productivity coaching, there's a specific scripts in the script folder on vendor relationships that you can get. All right. So think about that. Think about how many people can you add that through that source. So that's an exercise, some homework for you guys to do. We don't need to break into that. But here's another exercise. We'll do this one right now. All right, this is one of the things that I had to update because the NAR statistics have changed since 2014. So I had to, I had to update this a little bit. It is 12 to one. So we know that for every 12 people we have in our database, we can expect one piece of business. That may be that they buy or sell with us or they refer us to someone who buys and sells with us. And if we know that, then we know how many people we need to have in our database. So if you take the number of transactions that is your goal for closing, okay, and multiply it by 12, that's gonna tell you how many people you need in your database. Okay, so if you want to close, this class is 36. If you want to close 36 transactions this year, um, that would mean that you would need 432 contacts in your database. So does everybody know how many contacts you need in your database? So now your gap is the difference. Right? The gap is the difference between how many you need and how many you have. Now, if you know your gap, can you set a goal for yourself? How would you set a goal? If you know, you know what your gap is now, how can you set a goal for yourself so that you make sure that you're moving through this systematically to get that number in there? Time block. Time block, yeah. But you can also figure out how many do I need a day? Right. So in addition to how many conversations am I having and how many hours am I lead generating, we, we, we look at how many people did we add to our database. Right. Does anybody have a gap you want to share so I can we can do some math. So mine's anybody, like 150. Your gap is 150. All right. So let's say you wanted to get your 150 in in the next three months. The next three months would be 12 weeks. Right. And 12 weeks times five days would be 60. So we'd take the 150 and divide it by 60. And that would mean that you would need to add two and a half people a day to your database to get there in three months. Yes, Annie. I just want to make a little plug and tell you guys something I did at uh, a while back um, for entering people in your database, because I don't know about anyone else, but you look at all the contacts you have and, and you're like, I don't, how do I have time to put these people in there? Um, and so um, the leverage people will do that for you if you're if you're part of that. Um, and it is very inexpensive. Um, I had them upload all the contacts from my phone and all the contacts from my Facebook. Now, some of them overlapped. So I had to, you know, I'm still working on doing a little bit of trimming from that. But it was so easy, you know, and if you're tech smart, you can probably do it yourself. But I'm not. So um, use your leverage to do that. And now, now I go through my database and, and you know, I can tag, I can contact them for more information if I need it and so on. So I love that. So Jessica Riley, my leverage solutions, if you're at Keller Williams, um, is the, the, the service that you can do. And I think it was really inexpensive, wasn't it? That they, they, don't, they don't charge a lot to do that for you. Also, I got this at, write this down. You can Google it. I got this at Family Reunion. MC Backup Pro, and it's online, and I think it's like three to five dollars, and you can download your, I don't think it does your Facebook, but it will do your phone for you. You could get your phone down into a CSV 
that you could then import into your command or whatever database that you use. So it's MC Backup uh, Pro. So. What is CSV? CSV. CSV is the file that it's a, it's an I'm not a techie person, Marcus, but it's your it's your extension. Excel can open it, but a database has to have it in that format in order to be able to import it. So if you're ever in Excel and you go to save save and you want to save it to import it, you have to save it as a CSV file. And somebody here is probably more techie than me and can tell me what comma something something value common comma comma delimited. Yes, yeah, so there you go. So it, it's something. It's computer language. How about that? Before I was just trying to do that last night. So thank you, Carla. Um, trying to, and I couldn't, I, I downloaded it, but couldn't get it in CSV. So yeah. I'm doing my, my business phone. If you do file, <laughs> save as, right? I use file, Upload. save as, yeah. and then you'll go down and pick a CSV. I, I use Outlook, which is also great. Um, so if I receive an email from somebody that I need to save, I add them to my contacts. And See. the good thing about it is that over time, you can export them out of Outlook as a CSV. Yeah. Same with Google. If you have Google contacts, you can ex you can export out of Google. And then if you have, if you're Keller Williams and you have Command or whatever CRM you're using, they're gonna have an import form. And then what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to copy and paste your data into the into their form because if you try to import your form the again the computer language is not they're going to speak foreign languages from each other so you have to make sure it's in the right form but um you yeah. can get your linkedin contacts and download them as well oh yes linkedin dan how many of those you got about seventeen thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so that just leads us right to the next slide. Looky here. How many meds do you want? I love this. Godzilla has a quote on the slide. You know, Godzilla size matters. <laughs> there are no limits, right? So think about it. If it takes 400, when I say that was 406, that's 36 times 12. If it takes 432 people to communicate with on a regular and consistent basis to get 36 transactions for the year. What happens if I have 800 contacts and I have good systems, which is what we're getting ready to talk about for communicating with them. Does, would any, if, if, your goal is, if your goal is a number and you end up with twice as many transactions, are you gonna be mad? Anybody gonna be upset? I'm gonna quit. Darn it, I only wanted 20 transactions this year and I had 40, I'm quitting. No? So there are no limits. If you set up a routine for yourself of gathering, Miriam, say two, two and a half, two or three, two or three contacts every day, and you continue to grow your database, your business is going to grow accordingly as long as you do what we're getting ready to talk about next. Okay. It's not just about having them in there, right? If we just have their contact information in our command or our CRM and we do nothing with it, are we creating relationships? No. Are we reminding them that we're in real estate? No. Are we teaching them how to give us referrals? No. So that's what we have to do. So the first thing we have to do is grow our database, have a system. How many people are we going to add every day, every week? Set a goal for yourself, right? If you set a goal for yourself, then you know how far away you are from getting there. If you don't have a destination, if you arrive, it'll be an accident, right? It'll be a mistake. Don't want your business to be a mistake. All right, networking. I love it. If you build it, they will come. That's the myth. That's what I'm just talking about, right? It's not true. How many of you guys thought when you were first getting your real estate license, you thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get my real estate license and then everybody I know is gonna wanna buy a house. Everybody I know is gonna wanna sell a house and they're gonna call me. They're gonna call me and ask me to sell their house. Everybody thinks that when they get their license. Otherwise, why would anybody do this, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> But nobody thinks about this lead generation is the core part of our business. So all businesses, it's not just our business, every business, your doctor, your dentist, your hairdresser, your barber, your mechanic, your car salesman, your plumber, your every business has to drive or attract business to them. They all have to prospect and market just like we talked about in the past weeks, right? It's just the truth. We just have the luxury of being in a 
personal service relationship based business. So our driving business to ourselves is not salesy. I hear this all the time. How many of you guys have thought I don't want to call people because I don't want to sound salesy. I don't want to be a salesperson. We aren't selling anything. We aren't selling anything. All we're doing is offering to help. We're offering our services, which feels so much better than me and than trying to call and sell somebody something they don't need. There you go. The product that if we, we are selling, if you do feel like it's a sales job, the product we're selling, is it something that people need? Isn't it? One of you guys is a, it's been a long time. What is some, something hierarchy of needs? Somebody, what's the word? What's the? Maslow. Yes, yes. Isn't, isn't shelter one of them? Yes. We, we, we are in us, we are in um, an industry that takes care of people's base needs, basic needs. That's what we're working with. We're helping people with their basic need. All right. So we are, we have, we're fortunate. We have picked a good profession. There's a story in your book about Bruce Hardy. And um, since it's 10 o'clock and I have a tendency to run over, um, I'm not going to read the story to you, but it's on page 13. And if you want to go back and we've met um, Bruce Hardy a, a couple of times, he's in Spokane, Washington, Washington, and you can, you can find out, you can read a little bit more about that. But basically the summary of that story is that everyone he came across, he put into his database and he put them on an eight by eight. And at the time it was a 36, 33 touch. Now it's 36 touch. We've, we've updated that, modernized it a little bit because of technology. Um, but the important thing here to see is that it's systematic, right? This communication has to be systematic. If you have 20 people in your database, it would be pretty easy to contact them 36 times a year. Do you agree with me? Without any leverage or anything else, 20 people times 36 over the course of the year, be pretty easy to do it. Now we have 200. What's 200 times 36 touches? Right now we're talking, is it possible to do that without some leverage? So that's where we have to get the systematic tools in place. But he, by the way, has 4,700 people in his database. Now do that math. 4,700 people in his database divided by 12, because we can expect one piece of business out of every 12. He has a database to feed him 391 transaction, transactions a year. The average commission is $6,000. His database is worth $2.3 million. Remember when we talked about two weeks ago that your data bank, your database is your business. And when you retire, it's something that you can sell. His database is worth $2.3 million. So you can do, if you set a goal to feed your database and you systematically feed your database, you are growing an asset that has value to you and in the future to a golden handoff, right? So think about that when it feels like you're not doing something because you're not getting an immediate return on it. Think about that. All right. This is the know you like you trust you. They use respect. Um, know you like you trust you or respect you. And that gets them to remember you. 13 days. I've been told repeatedly that there was a study and it said that in 13 days, people will forget that you're in real estate. They may not forget you, right? But they're going to forget that you're in real estate. It's really important to you, but you're important to them, but maybe not what you do. Because could you automatically, think about this for a minute, think about people that you are, not your closest friends, but people that are you know one or two removed from you. Do you know what everybody one or two removed from you does exactly for a living? And even if they told you at one point in time what they did for a living, do you actually know? Do you remember? It would it come to your mind immediately. When you think of them, do you think, waitress or when you think of them do you think car salesman i mean well maybe car salesman's not a good example <laughs> but think about it right they have to be reminded all right so mind share top of mind these are the phrases that we use right we want to uh we want to be remembered for not only who we are, but we want them to remember what it is that we do and that we are available to help them or anybody that they know that needs our help, right? So you think about that, all the things they're thinking about, including other agents, and Annie says five, I'm not sure how many that is, but you wanna be the one that's on top, the one that comes to them first. And that's what we're gonna make sure we do. So 
You have to stay in touch. There's just no other way around it. You have to stay in touch. People may remember you in other ways other than an agent. And they remember you when they need help with real estate, but they may not remember you when someone else needs help. So we have to, we have to make sure we correct that. Your Mets, this is how roller coaster. You don't want big waves in your business, right? You guys want a constant income that you can count on. Is that true? So you have to keep your pipeline full all the time. I have bought a shirt, but my shirt this year, I buy a shirt every year at Family Reunion. My shirt this year I bought says live the funnel, right? It's the funnel, it's our pipeline. We have to live the funnel. We gotta keep putting things in the top of the funnel so that things come out of the bottom of the funnel so that we have a consistent business. All right, how to network. This is our numbers game. Numbers game in a contact sport, okay? It is relationships, contacts, and numbers. So prospecting, you have got to make the calls. How many times a year do you need to talk to your database on a minimum? Somebody tell me, how many times? Is it 36? Four, or well... Call, phone calls, you're right, 36, Marcus, absolutely. Four oh, of the quarter. 36 is phone calls. That's your quarterly phone calls. And no matter how you do it, some if you, if you wanna watch a great video, Google Gary in the box, Gary Keller and the box. Gary Keller had a shoe box with um, index cards in it with all of his contacts, that was his CRM, right? And he had them separated by months and he would talk to them, make notes on them and move them to the next month. So then every day he would just pull out his cards for the day and that's who he had to call. That was in the 1970s before we had computers and CRMs, right? I know agents today that do Gary in the box. They do the shoe box method, okay? If that's what works for you, that's fine. It doesn't matter what CRM you use. What matters is what? You have to use, use it. it. Yeah, you gotta use it. If you don't use it, it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter which one you use, you just have to use it. So quarterly calls, if you're at Keller Williams in command, you can, there's a quarterly call smart plan. You can use that. You can use our DTD2 that we use where they've taken the letters of the alphabets. Last week was M and X. Most people have lots of Ms, not very many Xs. So they've divided it up by statistical number of people that have that last name. You just have to have a system. Again, it doesn't matter what system you use. It doesn't matter what system you use, what matters? That you use it. That you use a system. You have to have a system so you make sure that you call everyone four times a year. All right, and then you're gonna have some marketing. So this is prospecting-based, marketing enhanced, like we talked about a few weeks ago. Letters, postcards, emails, personal notes, newsletters, reports. You have to send them. They have to be systematic and per and purposeful, right? They have to be purposeful. They have to be purposeful to meet our goals, to our relationships, and reminding them that we're in real estate and that we, they would we would like their referral, right? Purposeful, add value, and then remind them, stay top of mind. That's our purpose. All right. So we have an eight by eight. The eight by eight is intended to be when you first meet someone. So my my story right i got a business card it's blank i meet them at the grocery store they write their information down i come in i put them in my database and they immediately go on an eight by eight an eight by eight is going to cement my relationship or cement whichever way you say that i get made fun of all the time um it's going to cement your relationship over that eight weeks right so we're going to add value make phone calls stay connected eight times and then we're going to put them on a 36 touch. And that's what maintains, strengthens the relationship over time. Okay. So now your three hour habit. I don't know, let me get there. I don't know if this is an exercise we want to do or we're going to skip this one because we want to get, we want to get, I want you guys to leave here with a really good idea today of your eight by eight and your 36 touch. That is my goal for, for us today. So the three hour habit, um, this is what we've just talked about. We talked about this at the top of the hour, right? It's your three hour habit or whatever your time frame is that you need, you know, just make sure that you have an organization system. Does everybody know when it comes time to lead generate? And we, we talked about this, you got your time on your time block on your calendar. 
How do you know who you're going to call? Dan, when you have it on your calendar, how do you know who you're going to call? Well, you set the expectation in the morning. You go through your sphere because that's where your highest return is. And then uh, you decide what your other um, activities are going to be, like open houses, and you call around that, or whether you're farming a neighborhood and you want to call that neighborhood, or you know, you just make those decisions. So you have just a have plan. Yeah. Have a plan. So it could be a time block of 15 minutes before your lead generation starts, where you pull together all the people that you want to call. If you don't have a list of the people I'm going to call today, what's likely to happen? You're going to spend your time doing what? Nothing. And figuring out who to call. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, oh, well, I'm going to flip through my phone. Who do I want to call? I'll tell you one thing that happened in Bold. The last time we were in Bold in a room, our Bold coach would come up and you were supposed to be making phone calls. And it's amazing when it's 15 minutes, everybody's supposed to make phone calls. They We go through the script. You're supposed to make phone calls in the Bold room. And and if you guys don't know what bold is, it's just a special class that comes around once a year. If you're at Keller Williams or not, you're welcome to come. Even if you're not, um, it's a it's a series of classes that is amazing. But the the coach would actually take the phone and hit contacts and go to one person, click on it, and make it dial, and hand you your phone. Like you had to talk to the person that the coach dialed. And I was always petrified that they were gonna pick me and I was gonna end up calling somebody strange. I didn't know because <laughs> I, you know. Hey, Carla. I, yeah. Real quick, um, I just thought of this because I had seen something about this last few days, but good advice, I think, is that if you're timid about getting on the phones, make your first phone call or two to someone that you actually really know really well. It'll be a positive experience, and then it will kind of flow into going ahead and make it. Instead of that first call being an expired that's going to rip you a new one right out of the gate, then that kind of shuts you down. Just make it a positive experience. So even if you got to call your mom or someone in your family just to say, hey, I hope you have a yeah. great day or whatever, it gets those chemicals flowing in your brain and get you moving forward. Yep, absolutely. And some people are afraid to call their sphere, right? If, it, if, it, if that's the case, then call a neighbor, you know, call a stranger first, whatever it is, it's gonna, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it's going to make you do your job, then do it, right? Just do it, whatever it is. All right, the eight by eight, it's high impact, high saturation technique designed to put you in the number one position in the minds of everyone. So you meet somebody at the grocery store, they know four other realtors, you're going to do a blitz, right? You're just going to, you're just going to love on them for, you know, high, high, high impact loving on them, right? So that at the end of the eight days, you're the only one they think about when they think about real estate. That's the goal there. All right. So Let's talk about eight by eights. Okay, let me let me switch screens again because that is way too small. Hit say stop. Screen share. Okay, so here is a basic eight by eight plan. It's a little bit dated. It doesn't have a lot of technology in it, but we can we're gonna make our own eight by eights. We do not have to follow this. Okay, but it gives us an idea. So week one, we're gonna drop off or mail a letter of introduction along with our brochure, market report, business card, anything, right? We're gonna take them something of value, right? Week one. Week two, we're gonna give them something else of value. It could be a calendar, current market statistics. I'd skip the recipe card. I, I don't, I'm not a big recipe card person, but, but we have agents in our office that are huge on recipe cards and it works for them, but I, not my thing. Uh, or an inspirational card. Um, also, it was a great meeting you card, handwritten note, right? Something like that you could put in there. Week three, same thing, just another something. You're gonna send something of value. Week four, you're gonna make a phone call. Has a little bit of a script here for you. Um, then week five, again, something of value, a free report. Maybe it's maybe you know that they have a house they're gonna sell and maybe you have 10 things that you need to think about if you ever decide to sell your house or they wanna buy a house or market activity, whatever that might look like. Um, this might also be maybe if you're at Keller Williams, when you start a neighborhood nurture, or if you're not at Keller Williams, you've identified their neighborhood, you start sending them some market statistics for their neighborhood. So they know what's going on in their neighborhood. Um, maybe week six, you send, um, a house maintenance list or, um, some other real estate investment tips, something like that. Uh, week seven, something else of value, something that's not a throwaway. You could think about what that is. May not be something you want to invest in right now in the very beginning, but somewhere down the line, I did magnets. I did sports magnets right before the, um, 
right before the NFL season started. And it's a lot of fun when you go into a house and you see your magnet on somebody's refrigerator. You know, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I also would have people that would call me the next year and say, I didn't get my magnet this year. They might not have remembered I was in the real estate business, but they knew I was in the magnet business. <laughs> but something that they're not going to throw away. Um, then, so you got that, or notepad, something that they're not going to throw away. And then week eight, you're going to make another phone call. So eight weeks, two phone calls, and six other things. That's your eight by eight. Okay. Then you're going to put them from there into... 36 touch program. If you're at Keller Williams, you can go to the smart plan library and type in eight by eight, and you are going to find a ton of different people's eight by eights. And you can R and D it. You can use it as a suggestion. You can bring it in. You can change it. You can make it your own, or you can create your own. Um, now eight by eights. Would you agree with me that it's likely that you might need more than one eight by eight? Might you need a different eight by eight for somebody who you identified as a potential seller versus somebody you identified as a potential first time home buyer? Yes. Because a first time home buyer doesn't care about the 10 things needed to sell their home. They don't own one yet, right? So you might have to have two. You might have to have two different eight by eights. Um, you might have three different eight by eights. You may have an eight by eight for your allied resources, your vendors that you're getting into relationship with, you're creating referral relationships with. Would you need to have a different kind of um, eight by eight for um, a painter and a, a vendor? Yeah, so you probably need a seller, a buyer, a vendor, and then you might want an investor. If you run into investors, do you think an investor might need a different kind of eight by eight than... Then. So you, you have to think about the kind of people that you're running into and do I need a different eight by eight? And then you didn't need to have these set up. You need to determine what these are because the minute you come back with your card or whatever it is and you got this new piece of information, this new contact, they need to go on this eight by eight immediately, right? Because you, you, you've taken the time to gather their information. Now you've got to make that relationship happen so that they count towards your 12, one out of 12. Right? You have to start that relationship, that systematic, systematic. Are you guys back to the PowerPoint? Yeah. All right. So you're going to put all new METs on the 8x8 program immediately. Schedule your mailings. Make your calls. There's Gary's story, the Gary, Gary in the box. Um, always offer something of value. And then you don't have to schedule the mailings and calls on your calendar if you have a system, a CRM that's going to do it for you. That's your leverage. If you do not have a CRM with leverage, and all of you at Keller Williams have command, but it, there's some of you here that aren't at Keller Williams. If you don't have a CRM that has those systematic tools in there, then you're going to need to use, Edward, something like you said, you're going to need to use your Outlook calendar, your Google calendar, or something to set reminders so that you know that this is week five and I need to do this right? Whatever that looks like, you're going to need to set that up for yourself. Carla, what is the something of value? Something of value. Something of value could be your neighborhood nurture. Let me, let me stop sharing for a minute. Four times a year, well, we're going to talk about this on the 36 touch, but you've got your monthly neighborhood nurture. You might have market statistics. My board comes out and B-Bore comes out every month with statistics right? This is how many homes sold. This is the average home sale price, those things. That would be something you could put into a document that is something of value. Um, the home maintenance tips, you know, it's spring. We're coming up on spring. If you had, if you sent out, these are the things that you need to do around your home when we change seasons at springtime. That's something of value, right? So think about something that would be valuable, good information you added, to their world. It doesn't have to cost anything. It's just information. And there's plenty of it to R&D. Again, if you go in and look in your smart plan library or in Pinterest, right? You're gonna find it. You're gonna find something. One thing to put in here, um, I can't remember. I think it's Ann Bond that is starting to do some pot buys, but you can also, pot, does everybody know what a pot buy is? If you, if you go into Pinterest, you can find all kinds of ideas. Just type in the word pop, buy, B-Y. Um, so just little gifts that you can leave that are inexpensive. Like, you know, coming up on Easter, you could have, you know, two little Easter eggs and some Easter grass and a baggie that you hang on the door or something. Yeah, Dan. 
One that I uh, am going to do here shortly is uh, Amazon has uh, 200 packets of flower seeds for $59. Ooh. And a great way to plant a seed with your neighborhood. I love that. I'm going to plant a seed. I love and, that's and, awesome. And you're and awesome. Yes. Um, looking at the, um, I think it was page eight, know your maths. Um, when you talk about Popeyes, like who do you prioritize when it comes to that? Well, obviously your core, you know, your core and your, your you know, you're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. And it probably depends on what your pop by is. So Dan's just talking about, he's farming a neighborhood and he's going to plant a seed in his neighborhood. So he's gonna do a pop by in his neighborhood. So that would be on the top of that list. That would be people that he might not have even met yet. That's some lead generation up there. It could also be that you're gonna put, hand out poinsettias. I know there's a lot of people at, Christmas time that do poinsettias, well, they're going to do that for their core advocate group. And it could be that you're doing, um, um, I don't know, St. Patty's Day. Let's say you decided to do something. Well, the, the best pop by is popcorn, right? A little bag of popcorn that says, I'm just popping by to say hi or whatever. That's like the original pop by. I think that's where the, the whole thing came from. You can get that at Costco, little packets of popcorn, put it in a bag, you just pop them by um, and take that out to your sphere you know, your database. So, so Edward, the answer is yes, anybody, all of them, some of them, whatever works for you based on whatever campaign you're putting together. The thing is we have to plan, right? We have to have a plan. We have to have a system and we have to figure out what that system is. And each of you are going to end up with a different system, a different thing. So remember, you have to ask, what's the best way not to get a referral? Don't ask for it. Don't ask for it. Was the best way not to have them know that you would like to help them with real estate? You guys have heard my story. I didn't tell her I wanted to help her, right? She didn't know that I would go 20 minutes away to sell a house because I didn't ask, right? So you got to ask the best way. So you have to make sure that each time there has to be a call to action, right? There has to be something that you're, you're giving value, right? Give, 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 and then ask. Give, 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 and then ask. We've got to make sure we're asking. All right, we're going to we're gonna wait. We're going to talk about 30, the 36 touch. Then we're going to, instead of breaking into small groups today, since we're winding down, we've got like 40 minutes left. We're going to talk about the 36 touches, and then we're going to come back and we're going to brainstorm together, okay? So I'm going to skip that right now. 36 touch. So after your eight by eight, so you got eight, eight touches, they call them touches, eight touches in eight weeks. Then we're going to go on a 36 touch program. And this is over the course of a year. Now, if you want to do more than 36, you're going to be great because think about how often do people touch you, businesses touch you, Amazon, Best Buy, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. How many times are you hearing from them? The world has changed, right? When this was written in 2014, 36, 33 was probably enough, right? 36, it's questionable now if 36 is enough to keep you top of mind. But you have some extra touches, right? You have extra touches, Facebook touches. If you do Facebook Lives, people see your posts, right? You have extra opportunities. But just make sure 36 is the minimum. You need to be in front of people a minimum of 36 times a year. So it says it's an overkill over time. I don't know that overkill is actually the right word, but it's just, you know, repetitive. If you know that every 13 days they're going to forget you're in real estate, how often do you want to get in, touch in front of them? Every 12 days at least. <laughs> 12 days. Yes, I love that. 12, 13 days. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's really the way you should think about that. You want to make sure that you're the person that they think of when they have a real estate need. All right, I'm going to switch screens again because again, I can't I can't read that on my screen, so I don't know how you guys could possibly read it. On page 27, by the way, of the book booklet that I sent you, there is a piece of paper you can use to plan out your um, your eight by eight, and you're going to have the same thing for your 36. Okay, so. Basically, you're going to have, let's start down here. You're going to have 12 touches once a month. 
Um, at Keller Williams, what we have is the neighborhood nurture, right? So they're going to get a really cool email every month that's going to tell them exactly what's going on in their neighborhood. Now, if they're a buyer and they live in an apartment complex, they probably don't care what's going on in the neighborhood where they live. You're going to set their neighborhood up for where they think they might want to be, right? If you have people in your database that don't want to move, they rent and they don't want to move, then you do, or they can't, right? Maybe they have a 400 credit score and they can't stop renting, right? But they don't care what's going on in their neighborhood. I always ask the question, well, if you could, you know, when you get your credit score up and you're ready to buy, where would you like to live? Then I'm going to set that up as their neighborhood, right? I have people in my database set up on, they live in Indianapolis, they want to live in Florida, and they are getting Florida neighborhood nurtures because it's just, they like to look at houses in Florida. And guess what? When they get ready, and they wanna buy a house in Florida, who are they gonna think of? The person that's been feeding them Florida houses for five years, right? And they call me on them. Oh my gosh, they, this, this is my favorite. Oh my gosh, did you see the house you sent me? Which one? <laughs> no, <laughs> they think I'm looking at them and sending them to them, right? So that's awesome. They remember me, right? They, that's a good thing. So 12 touches. If you don't have neighborhood nurture, think of something. Some some realtors do um, some realtors do a monthly newsletter. So think about what you'd like that to be. Armand, do you have a question? Uh, yeah. How do you get Florida, whatever? Nurture? Just pick that neighborhood. So you're just, gonna, you're just gonna move your map and zoom in to whatever, wherever they wanna be in Florida and pick two or three neighborhoods in Florida, wherever they wanna be. I have myself set up, I get Captiva ones because that's my place, you know? So I'm, I'm on a neighborhood nurture and I get to see what's transacting on Captiva, Florida. So you just scroll down the map. You know, when it goes, choose a neighborhood, you can either write a neighborhood in or, or find on map, you're just gonna have to move the map to get to where you're, to Florida or Phoenix or wherever that might be. All right, so something you're gonna send them something every month that is real estate related. All right, then we're gonna have our four um, telephone calls, right? So we're gonna call quarterly. And then um, technically there's four more there cause you're gonna send them a card after you talk to them. It was great talking to you. Send them a handwritten note. Handwritten notes are magical, I promise you. Um, birthday cards. Uh, for their birthdays, you should get two touches in for the birthday, maybe even three. The birthday smart plan in command is going to tell you to make a social media post, a text, and a phone call, uh, and a four, four, and a, and a card. So that's four touches for a birthday. I would count that as one because that doesn't really, it's like overkill or whatever, but whatever you can do on birthdays. Uh, Shelly mentioned um, people coming back to her because she's got, you know, Mother's Day, Father's Day cards. Um, and then you got the other 16 up there, and this is where you have to figure out for yourself what you want that to look like. I'm going to stop, share real quick. I want to make sure that all of you at Keller Williams know about this. Has everybody looked at the zine? This comes out quarterly, and it is amazing. It is already pre-done for you. It is high quality. It is a magazine, quarterly magazine that you can either... Um, you can have my leverage solutions, put it into, um, you know, a, a, an electronic one that where the pages flip. So it looks like a magazine, you know, like they don't have to scroll through a PDF, but it flips the pages. She can do that for you. She can customize it for you. You can do it yourself. You can do it, download it, take it somewhere, get it printed, bound pretty and mail it. You can do anything that you want, but it's the content is pre-done for you. And it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. So I want to make sure you just go to designs. And then um, let me see if I can get back to how I got there. It's designs and then uh, it's down at the bottom under campaigns, I think, at the very bottom of the list. Uh, anyway, I see templates, here it is. It's down here under collections is what it is. If you go to collections, then you're going to see the, and you go to new designs, that's where you're going to find the zine, Z-I-N-E. The other thing I wanted to make sure you saw is if you go to smart plans and you type in the word newsletter, you have an entire group of agents at Keller Williams who's sharing with you. And there are a ton of newsletters here. Here is a March newsletter. Um, five things not to do after applying for a mortgage. Anyways, you can go in here. 
you can add this smart plan to your smart plan, and then you can go in and edit it, right? But you could actually send a newsletter out, It'd probably take you maybe 15 minutes to update one to make it from you and send it out to your entire database in March. So you have lots of options. Just make sure you, you know, you, I just wanted to make sure you knew where you could get that. For those of you that aren't at Keller Williams, or even if you're at Keller Williams, you don't see anything that you like. All you have to do is go out. I promise if you Google it, you're going to find it. If you, if you um, look on Pinterest, you're going to find it. You're going to find lots and lots of ideas out there on, on how to come together with those other 16 things that you need to make 36. But if you don't have a plan, what's going to happen? You're not going to do it, right? If you don't have it, it's just like if it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist. If you don't have a plan, you're going to get to the end of the year and you might have touched people six or seven times. And maybe you're going to get a little bit of business out of that. But do you want a little bit of business or do you want to get all the business you're entitled to? What, what would you prefer? And if all you have to do right now is come up with your 36 touches, create your smart plans or your system around it, put it in your calendar, whatever that looks like, and to set it and forget it, right? Make your quarterly calls and the background is doing everything else. It's reminding you it's time to mail something out. It's reminding you that it's time to do something. Are you more likely to get it done if you get a reminder that says, hey, you need to mail out a, a quarterly newsletter, right? Or whatever it is that you've decided. So you have to come up with a plan. Now your 36 touch is gonna to be very much like we talked about with your eight by eight may not be a buyer one, a seller one. It may not be that specific, but you may need one for each of those four categories that we started with. So you may have a 36 touch for the people because remember we're trying to get those that first group of people to become core advocates, right? So we may have a 36 touch program that is focused just on the, the majority of our database, the people that we're trying to get into relationship with. They might do business with us. Then we're going to have a group a 36 touch plan for people who have done business for us we're going to have a 36 touch program for our vendors and then we're definitely going to have a 36 plus 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 much more than 36 for our core advocates and our raving our raving fans our vips need to get loved on a lot more than 36 times a year would you agree with me on that if they're sending you lots and lots of business you should be doing something pretty awesome for them right pretty awesome for them so I, the way I see it, you probably need four eight by eights and you need four 36 touches. And they may have some shared elements in each one, but they may have something special in each one as well. And you're just gonna have to take some time to figure out what that looks like for you so that you get to maximize that to get that one piece of business out of 12 people you put into your database. All right, so. 36 touch, seven strategies for success. You have to do it. You have to do it. You have to plan it. If there's something that you can delegate to someone else, those of you in the supported model, look at what my leverage solutions does for you and see, is there something that you can leverage out? Like Annie said, building your database. Also, can you leverage out? They can do your zine. They can do other things for you. Look at that. See what that looks like. Make sure you're making your four calls a year. If you're not making your full four calls a year, none of the rest of it matters because that's where talking to people is where you get into relationship. The other things just solidify that relationship. And then make sure you're writing handwritten notes. This says three handwritten notes after each phone call. I don't know what that means, but I think they're saying three out of the four calls, write a handwritten note. Make sure that you're being personal about it. Always come from contribution. Nobody wants to be salesy. Nobody wants to be sold to. Nobody wants you to call them four times a year and just say, do you want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, right? We don't do that. We're going to come from contribution. Give follow-up, give more follow-up, receive. You know, that's your re referrals or ask. We got to give, 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 be a giver. All right, get personal. Jason mentioned this earlier, right? Part of a relationship is knowing them. You have an opportunity in your CRM or if you're doing Gary in the Box, whatever, write notes. If they tell you they're going to Disney, then the next time you talk to them, be sure you ask them, how was Disney? Like, how's that going to make them feel? If they talked to you three weeks, three months ago, they told you they were going to Disney next month. And when you talk to them two months later, you say, oh my gosh, how was your trip to Disney? That's going to make them feel special, isn't it? Is that going to help create a relationship? So make sure you get personal. 
um, do whatever you need to do. I meet people. And then when I come and I put them, my meds, when I meet them, I make a note, where did I meet them? I'm not going to remember where I met them. I got to write it down. Where did I meet them? Who do we know? Go on Facebook. When they become your Facebook friend, figure out how many common people you know. That's going to be the aha, right? When you find out that they know somebody that I would, I went with somebody that I met in Indianapolis that went to high school, was friends with somebody's sister that I went to high school with. And I went to high school in some small little town population. There were 86 people in my graduating class. Who would think you're going to, you know, find people that know people that you don't know? It's weird when you find that out, but that helps you get personal, make connections. Telephone calls and pop buys, those are your big deals. Those are the glue, right? That's the things that are going to be special and set you apart from everyone else. All right, have the Midas touch. This is what's going to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Annie, if everybody knows five realtors, do you think five realtors are doing this? Here's the way to know that. How many people have ever called you? You know other realtors before you got your real estate license. How many ever called you? None. None. How many ever brought no. a pot by? So what happens when you do this? You become top of mind. You're going to be the only one. You're going to be right. the only one that they think of, right? You're going to be the only one. All right. Be consistent. You got to be everything. This is my word for the year, right? You have got to be consistent. It needs to be on autopilot. If it's left to you, to remember to do it, what's the likelihood it's gonna happen? <laughs> it's an accident, right? Um, and then this is not part, creating your eight by eight, creating your 36 touch, this is not part of your lead generation. So what does this mean that you now need to do? Time block. You need to find time on your calendar to work on this, right? You've gotta put this on your calendar. If you spend your lead generation time doing this, what did you not do? Gen. Lead generate, right? So this is all a moot point if you're not making the calls. So you have to do that. And then keep it, I love it, that kiss, keep it, keep it simple. I, everything I've ever heard is keep it simple, stupid, right? But I love this. Keep it simple, salesperson, whatever that is. Just keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. You don't, it doesn't have to have rhinestones and diamonds. You don't have to wow them. It's just about the touch, right? Remember what the point is. The point is top of mind, not to blow them away. All right, you can read the story again in your book about Bruce Hardy and his salesperson. It's a funny little story, but we aren't gonna do that today. Um, and then know your costs. We're not gonna go through this so much because when the next slides and in your book, you can go through this in your book, but what you're gonna find is that it's a lot less expensive now than it used to be because of the computer, the internet, and all the things that we have. So you have some very inexpensive gift. You have some very inexpensive opportunities. But think about a few things of value that you might cost money and then figure out what that looks like for you. And like we were talking earlier, I can't remember who asked me the question, but you know, if you have a different, like your entire database, since you have 200 people in your entire database, and you have 20 that's your core advocates. Your core advocates, their touches may cost a little bit more, right? Maybe you send them a $5 Starbucks card when they send you a referral, or you know, maybe they get something special. Maybe they get a special Christmas. Maybe they get a pie at Thanksgiving, whatever that looks like. And your entire database, maybe you spend less on it. And maybe in the beginning, you don't spend any money on that, you know, or just Christmas cards and stamps or whatever that looks like. But you just need to go back and figure out a value for it. But don't think you have to spend a lot of money. And I think that is the most important thing to remember is it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't actually have to cost anything. Um, because everything can be done, you know, electronically, maybe some stamps. So, but there is a formula on page 35 of your manual. If you're really interested in costs, you can go through that. Um, we're running out of time and I really want to go back and think about what our 36 touches would be. Um, so core advocates, this is something to really focus on. These are your VIPs though. So you need to make sure you're identifying your VIPs and then figure out what does their 36 touch program look like because it needs to be 36 plus 
and it needs to be something extra special. All right, referrals real quick. Let's go through that and then we'll we'll, we'll circle back around to the 36 touches to wrap up. So um, success through others, just remember, it's all about referrals. Um, the strategy to ask for referrals, you have to educate them. One of the things that I like to say um, is, if you know anybody who's having something major going on in their life, they're going through some type of transact transition, um, they might need my help as it relates to real estate. So if you would put me in contact with them, I would love to offer to help them out, right? It's just that simple. You have to educate them as to who you want. If you really like working with first time home buyers and you have friends that have kids that are in college and moving towards that, that place in their life, you say, you know what, I love working with first time home buyers. Tell them a story of your favorite first time home buyer story, right? And then to say, you know, if any of your, your children or your children's friends are getting ready to buy a house, send them my way. I'd love to take care of them. You know, I've got an extra special program for that, whatever that looks like. So educate, ask, and then reward. When do we reward for a referral? Well, first of all, we can't pay for a referral, right? Big no-no. You cannot pay for a referral, but you can reward for a referral. When do we re re reward? After closing. Well, I would argue that the best time to reward for it is when they give you the referral. Because what we want to reward is the activity that we want to repeat. Sometimes people are going to refer you business that is not going to close. Yes. But we want them to continue to refer. So I bought a stack. You can go on to Starbucks and just buy a stack of $5, um, $5 cards. And so when any, anytime somebody sends me a referral, I just mail them a $5 Starbucks card with a thank you. But it could be as simple as a thank you card. It doesn't actually have to be uh, something fancy. It could be, you know, it could be that, it could be, I don't know what, what it might be, but it's just something small, a token. It doesn't have to be a big deal. It's just a token of appreciation is what it needs to be that, re, that, that encourages the repeat of the activity that you want to repeat, which is that they keep sending you people. You can also you buy Amazon um, $10 cards. You can buy like packs of three or five, um, just like at Walgreens or whatever. And I carry some in my wallet um, just in case, you know, and I have some Starbucks $5 cards too. Yeah. In case. Yeah. Uh, just, a to just a nice token gift, something to, to, to say thank you and to, again, encourage the repeat of the business. Uh, um, yes. There's also, um, I know one's called Banner Season, but there's a few services that just for like two, three bucks, they'll send out a card and like a brownie to the home of the person. I mean, if you got a referral, I think that's a good way for your appreciation. Okay. You could also have a special pot buy that you give, you know, for anybody that gives you a referral. You can figure out what, you know, all kinds of different things that you could do that you could do for yourself. So, you know, just you could even say this, you know, I know you know a lot of people, right? After after you close with someone, you know, you think about the reticular activator. I don't know those of you guys, have, have you ever thought I'm going to buy this car? I, I've never seen this, my car that I'm getting in the color that it is. Then you buy the car and then every car you see is that car. Or those of you, when you were pregnant and I didn't know anybody that was pregnant then I got pregnant and everybody I saw was pregnant. <laughs> Just one of those things, it's called your reticular, reticular activator. You can tell your buyers at closing, you know what? You're probably gonna find a lot of people that are thinking about buying a house now after you've bought a house. If you would do me a favor and send them my way. We have to ask and we have to tell them who to look for, right? We have to educate them. And then we have to tell them how to give us a referral. How do we want a referral? Do we want them to give our contact information to somebody else? No, we want one of two things. Can you either give me their information and I'll give them a call or could you connect us? Like maybe a joint text, right? Annie, I'd like you to meet my friend, Dan. He's a realtor and I know you're looking for a house. I wanted to connect the two of you, right? You have to get the connection in order for it to be a, a, a good referral. You have to teach them to do that for you. All right, and then make sure they know it's important to you. Like this is, you've seen the little phrase, this is the lifeline of my business, right? I, I love my, my clients and I love my referrals, whatever that looks like. And then if somebody gives you a referral, what should you do while you're working with that referral? Acknowledge the person. Yeah. 
let them know. Oh my gosh, I you can't give details, right? You have a fiduciary duty. You can't give specifics, but you can say, oh my gosh, I am enjoying so much working with your friend, right? And then after you close, I would ask your friend, is it okay if I thank so-and-so for referring me to you, right? And say, oh, they closed on their new house. Thank you so much for putting us together. I enjoyed working with them. Make sure you reinforce the thank you, the gratitude, 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 right? You want to throw out the gratitude at every opportunity, throw it out. How does people, how does it feel when people express gratitude towards you? Feels great, but I got one question. Um, yes, you just Marcus. said something that I, I, I want to pay attention to. You said, ask the person you're working with if it's okay if you can share with the person that referred them. So that is a stipulation as well. Well, I would. I don't know that it's a stipulation, but but I I don't know what their relationship is, right? I mean, sometimes do you think that it's possible that somebody could refer you to somebody and that person didn't really want the other person to know what's going on in their life? I just always, I just always on the air, I always err on the side of being careful. So I, don't, I wouldn't say that it's a, it's a hard, fast rule, Marcus, but if I don't know what the relationship is, I'm going to ask permission. Okay. Just asking because I'm, I'm thinking that your experience has taught you that or either being empathic, but I just want to kind of retain that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's more me. I'm, I'm sure that is. Yes, Annie. Well, this is something that I've seen a lot and I, I would love feedback on it. But when, like, for example, when you close and you're posting stuff on Facebook, sometimes you post pictures of the, the closing with your clients actually there. I've seen people like detail out, you know, um, or a picture of their house and detail out, you know, we just sold this house for such and such so much, you know, $30,000 over list price. Um, and I've always been more general because I think about it for me, I would want it. I know as a realtor, you're proud of what you've done, but I, I just might say well over list price or something like that. But I, I well, I'm we, just going to, I'm just going to ask permission. Yeah. Now, if I represent the seller, I can say that it was over list price. I'm sure the seller's not going to care, but the buyer may not want their whole family to know that they just paid $30,000 over list price. And I don't know how that's even something that would, we would want to share. I'm going to tell you the bottom, the base rule for me is that I'm not going to encroach myself on anybody else without asking their permission. So I'm just going to say, hey, you know what? I'd love to post this. Um, I'd love to post, you know, a congratulations. Is it okay with you? right? Is that going to be all right? When we take the picture at the title company, is it okay if I post this on my social media? That kind of thing. Right. Yes, Jason. So I don't know if everyone can do it, but I know if it's a great thing if you can through text messaging as one of your touches. If you segment your clients, obviously you'll have phone numbers most of the time. So if you segment them as groups and you're texting, you can actually, like through Verizon, you can schedule text to go out at whatever time you want. So if you wanted to text a group like your A group, um, you know, twice a month or whatever, you can schedule those texts and then just write the text out, hit, hit the send, and then it'll, it'll send it out on the days that you schedule it. You don't even have to worry about it. Then you'll just start getting replies from those texts and then you'll know, you know, that it went out. Um, so that's probably an easiest way rather than, getting a notice that you have to text someone that day and then having to go through your phone and text them all. Yeah, when you also have your smart plans in Twilio as well. Yeah, well, if you don't have Twilio, that isn't, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely, because not everybody here is in command. Okay, so we're, we're definitely running, I talk too much, I we're running out of time. All right, um, so educating your contacts, think about what, write out your script, right? Write out your script, how are you gonna ask for referrals? And then practice that script. And then what's going to happen? If you write it out, you practice the conversation, then is it going to be easy when you add it in? All right? So at script practice, you guys should get in a group at script practice. And we would do it if we had more than 10 minutes. We would get together right now and we'd work on how are we going to ask for a referral? Right? Write out how are you going to ask for a referral and then practice it so that you know about it. Right? The best way not to get a referral. Not to ask. Not to ask, right? Not to ask. So we got we got to do that. All right. And then we talked about the reward already. And all right. 
So, and then your 36 touch, then you're going to have a 36 touch for your core advocates and your advocates. Those are going to focus on referrals, right? You're going to have, we're going to, in addition to asking when you talk to them your four times a year, throw something in those 36 touches or all your 36 touches. I love referrals. I'd love to take care of your friends and family, right? If you put it in that language, you're not asking for a lot. You're at, you're giving your clients the opportunity to add value into someone else's life by offering value to them. So, all right, I want to stop this. I want to send you guys back to your book a little bit because there was some lot of really great information in your book. Um, one of them is your, your inner circles. So your allied resources, those of you that are in the 12 weeks, we've been working on your vendor list, but this is a really good um, place for you to go. Think about these types of people. Do you have these types of people in your database? And then what kind of value could you add to them, right? So think about the value. Remember, give, 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 right? Give, 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 and you, you'll receive. Um, if you guys have never read, it's a parable, a short little book. It's called The Go-Giver, and it's by Bob Berg. It's a really Beautiful. short book and super quick to read. Super, super quick to read. It's in parable format, so it's a story with a great lesson in it the go-giver, Bob Berg, but you'll learn, go, go, give, 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 and that's how you receive. All right, so think about this, write down what you got on here. This is gonna help you make your 36 touch plans and put together. Um, and then um, this is where you can track the business that you're sending out. With your allied resources, referrals are a two-way street. What does that mean? If I refer business to you, you're going to refer it to me. Yes. And, and actually, maybe the converse way, I'm going to refer it to you so you refer to me, right? I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I'm in control. Which, which side of the equation am I in control of? Giving. Giving, right? So I'm going to give the referral. And then I'm going to follow up and say, I referred my client to you. How did that go for you? And, you know, then I'm going to say, I really love this to be, a, I would love to send more business your way, but I really like to work on a two-way street. You know, then the script is this, do you have a realtor that you send your clients to and they have a real estate need? And if they say, yes, they already have someone, then my question always is, then what would it take for me to be your number two, right? I'm, I'm not going to start with wanting to replace somebody. I'm just going to say, what would it take for me to be your number two? And then, and then move on from there. So that's the way that works. Um, and we, so there's lots of really good information in your book that I sent out about your advocates and that's, you know, keeping track of your meetings with them. So that's going to be really important. That is lead generation. Talking to your allied resources and meeting with your allied resources is lead generation as long as you're asking for referrals. So then there's an example 36 touch for your advocates in here as well in your book um, and then your core advocates again it talks about that with another really great story so I, and then some more exercise so i would definitely we see here we are we're five minutes down i would highly recommend that you take some time to fig to go back through the materials that i emailed out yesterday and look at some of those exercises and see if they help you but what i want to do we got five minutes left what i want to hear from each of you is a takeaway from today. What is your to-do list from today? What have you, what, what are you going to focus on? Because we talked about a lot, I know. So Can Annie, you have a, oh, Jason, you want to go first? Yeah, just real quick. Um, I just, well, as you're speaking and everything, and I didn't think of this long before today at all, and I should have, um, is, and I kind of was thinking about Marcus, because he, you know, something about him, I want to, give him advice but or not but um so i coach sports and i just got a text yesterday that now i'm out of basketball i'm getting ready to coach flag football and one of the parents asked said they signed up their kid wanted to play for me they put up that they wanted to play for me now this is like the fifth kid out of seven on my basketball team that are going to be playing for me and i said i appreciate you trusting me to coach your your, your son and uh, they said well we wouldn't have it any other way because um you've built a bond with my son that you'll never forget. So a lot of times to reach that adult, um, you can go through their kid. I hate to say that. It sounds like you're using the kid, but if you, if they can trust you with their kid or something important, 
probably going to trust you. Otherwise, I know if you coach sports, or have children or anything, but that might be a route to go. So, I mean, it's kind of the law of reciprocation. You're given to their child. They're going to give something. For sure. I mean, yeah. most 100% of the time, I yeah. think. Give, give, give. All right, Jason, Thanks. what's your Thanks. one takeaway? What, what are you going to put into action this week? Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to set up some 36 touch plans and seg and segment my data. Awesome. I'm going to make, I'm going to say this real quick. Anybody in your database that isn't on some type of touch program, you might as well delete them because you're not communicating with them, right? You're not, you're not communicating with them. All right, Edward, do you have a, a an action plan for the next week from today? Um, yeah, so uh, a lot of my work this week is going back to prospecting via phone calls. Um, I've been out for a week. I uh, had a, uh, an infection that took me out of work for a while. So I need to go back and uh, reach out to people a little bit more. I'm considering door knocking. Um, it's something I haven't done. I watched a video yesterday about how valuable it is um, that, you know, I mean, I do calling, but uh, don't wanna rely on it 100%. So I also wanna go into those neighborhoods and actually be face to face with someone. So I'm excited to see how that goes and what I can extract out of it and um, just continue learning. Um, uh, the past two weeks have been very difficult in a sense that I, I felt like I was experiencing what most agents call the, uh, um, the shiny object syndrome is that I've looked at so many methods of trying to prospect and all those things, databases and everything. So it's just kind of calming it down and um, focusing on one at a time and spending some time in it um, is something that I really needed because I looked back and yes, I do reach out to people. I do have people signed up on neighborhoods. Um, news. I do have them signed up on listing announcements and all those, but it all became too fragmented. Um, and I didn't find myself to be very excellent in just one of them. So uh, going back to work this week, I'm excited because I'm looking forward to uh, just sort of calming everything down and focusing on one thing at a time. I love that. Yeah, we have, we have to conquer the basics first, right? If we conquer the basics, yeah, then we can I start do. layering in some of the other things. All right, Pam, you got a an action item for this next week? Um, yeah, I had a lot of takeaways, but I guess number one is I'm going to work on honoring my, my calendar. I love That's it. Fun. Yeah. Awesome. Tennille, how about you? Oh, you're muted if you're talking to us. All right, how about you, Aaliyah? Um, my biggest takeaway is forming relationships. So just because they're in my database, I can't just, oh, well, they're on a smart plan. Like I have to pick up the phone, call them, form their relationship. Awesome. Miss I'm Valerie, sorry, I you. could not find my... Oh, <laughs> unmute. All right, there you are, dear. What's your takeaway today? Um, is to get organized and to have and practice my scripts, have my scripts available and practice them. I love it. All right. Miss Valerie, how about you, dear? Oh, you're, there you go. Hi. Hello. Hi. This helps. It's like, oh, I see. Just all this. It helped break it down for me to get a, a better control of all the contacts I have. It's like, okay, I see that now. So well, Valerie, I know question. that I know that you say to me because you are dual career, you know, you have limited amount of time. If you spend the time and get this all set up, it's going uh -huh. to work for you while you're at work. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah, it's all going to work for you in the background. I love it. All right, Miriam, how about you? Any takeaways? Um, I need to get all these people on the the plans. Like I'm putting them in the database, but I have not done adding them to plans. So I'm going to work on that. Okay, love it. Armand, how about you? I'm, uh, I'm going to go through uh, my smart, smart plans and try to learn what, how to use them, what, the, what they're really saying, what uh, circumstances that I use each one of them. 
And then I'm also going to put together, figure out how to put together a uh, smart plan for, uh, or a couple of smart plans for the uh, allied resources, the uh, whatever you want to call the it. Vendors. Business, mm -hmm. business, vendors. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right, Dan, how about you? Uh, well, primarily, I need to make sure I'm getting all the conf all of the information for the people in my Facebook group because I don't have all of their information, and then making sure I have all of them on one of these smart plans. Okay, love it, Miss Annie. I have so much. <laughs> <laughs> my schedule is so well to... between family reunion and <laughs> and my schedule change. Yes, yeah, so my <laughs> so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep it simple, stupid. Yes, um, and um, the first thing I'm gonna start with is um, revamping my schedule and my time blocking. And um, so um, I'm gonna time block a little bit in, you know, for database, working on my database and a little bit in for um, relationship building other than lead gen. Of course, lead gen is gonna be on my uh, time blocking. Um, and one of the things that um, I decided I was gonna do is at least one person a week, um, I'm, I'm going to try to do coffee or lunch or something like that um, and build a relationship, whether it be someone in my core, you know, core group, or it be a vendor, or, or sometimes, you know, what, what I've thought is um, reaching out to another um, realtor, someone who is more successful, um, someone who I admire, um, and asking them just, you know, how have you done it? Yeah, so yeah. I think that's going to be something that I'm planning on doing. So I love it. All right, Marcus, how about you? What's your takeaway? Uh, my takeaway is I'm also a dual agent and my takeaway is uh, time blocking. But I also I want to um, just break everything down. It's drinking through this water hose that is uh, kind of. Um, it, it's overwhelming, but but just breaking everything down, you know, to smaller bites. Yes, absolutely. How we eat an elephant. My number one thing for you guys is if you do not have your lead generation time on your calendar, right? If you do not have the amount of time, if you don't know the amount of time that you need and you can't figure it out, let me know. We'll figure it out together. Then you have to put it on your calendar, time block it on your calendar. This is the amount of hours that I need for lead generation. Then I can build my time blocking around that for everything else. And then you just have to honor and you just have to honor your time block. So awesome. All right. Well, thanks for sticking with me on a Saturday morning. And um, I ran over again. I can't seem to not run over, but at least it's not as long as the last time. I hope you guys are finding value in the material from this class because while it's a little dated and I've had to do some updating, I still think it's absolutely, it's those basics, right? Marcus, it, this is the basics. This is where you have to start. And Edward, all those shiny objects, they don't mean nothing if you don't figure this part out right? It doesn't matter I how agree. much you yeah. lead generate. If you don't know what to do with them when you get them in your database, then you wasted your time, right? Because a majority, almost everybody, when you call them, are not going to be ready right now. It's just yeah. not possible that you're going to find all the people that are ready right now. So you have to make sure you have a plan in place that you're there for them whenever they're ready. And that's what we're talking about today. So awesome. All right. You guys have an awesome Saturday. And then we'll Thank be back you. together next Saturday and do some more talking about lead generation. Yeah. Thank Looking you. forward to it. Have a great week. Bye, guys. Oh, and Tuesday at group coaching, we're going to talk about 36 Touch. That's what we're doing Tuesday. We're going to dig into that even more Tuesday. Hey, Carla, real quick. Yes. I know everyone else is going to go. But my thing was, uh, is I'm learning that, well, I can't have the thought. When I transition, or when I said, okay, I'm gonna become a realtor, it, sh it should be like this. It should be, um, you're starting a business. You should have marketing uh, funds. You should have, you know what I mean? You should, this is a business and every business that you know ha comes to you by way of a marketing campaign. And so it's the transition of business from an everyday working man, right? So that's it is business. The beautiful thing about our business though, and, and it's it's back to the, if you think about any business that you start, your cost of entry is gonna be much higher than real estate, right? 
the cost, the cost, if you will, real estate is that real estate has to be prospecting based and marketing enhanced. If you don't have all of these systems in place and you go out and put a billboard up, right? Then what are you going to do with the leads that come in from the billboard? Because they're not ready right now. So we have to be prospecting based, right? Marketing enhanced. So you really don't have to have marketing dollars. Your budget for marketing has to be some time. And that's, that's the big thing. And that's what's really difficult for dual career agents. And that's where this 36 touch and the eight by eight and the smart plans come into effect because they're going to do this in the background for you. It's systems. Absolutely. Yes. And thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And Jason, uh, I, I am a coach. I love coaching. I coached football for many years, high school, all the way down to when my kids first started. So absolutely yeah well now you got all those awesome. parents to go find that's right utilize them buddy we'll all see right. y'all thank, right. thank you have a great Appreciate weekend it. thanks carla valerie is so nice to see you well sort of see you see your name 